Hi, I'm Bob Harris. Welcome to Durman's educational video series. This video series is going to consist of uh, working with urethane concrete. Now, some of you may have seen uh, a past video on the Durman website uh, on urethane concrete. What we're demonstrating on this video is the new and improved version of the urethane concrete. Um, the previously shown version of the urethane concrete had a working life or a pot life somewhere around eight to 10 minutes where this is doubled in the working time. So we have up to 20 minutes of working time. So it's a su substantial improvement over uh, um, previous generations. So what we're gonna be demonstrating is the SC, the Purdue UMC SC, which is the seal coat. And as you'll see, it's uh, in a part one, part two, and a part three. We're gonna also demonstrate the Purdue UMC trowel grade, which is the same, part one, two, and three. And then we're going to uh, demonstrate the self-leveling, which is also part one, two, and three. On any three of these systems, you have the ability to tint or pigment uh, the material, and we'll be demonstrating that in this video series as well. Um, on the SC, which is what we're going to demonstrate today, that stands for seal coat. So there's always a question with using uh, urethane cements on do we need to actually prime or seal the surface? So the question is, it really is dependent on the substrate. Um, if you don't seal or pre-prime using the, the SC here, um, the material, the, T, the TG, the trial grade, or the self-leveling grade will adhere, but sometimes you may see some slight pinholing. So if you're in an environment where you can't have any blemishes in the surface, Durman recommends to go ahead and always prime with the uh, seal coat. And that's what we're going to demonstrate during this video series. Now, why would you consider using um, a urethane cement? You've got the, uh, the thermal shock uh, capabilities or qualities of the material. Uh, for example, in a food prep where you're um, washing the floor with hot water uh, or cold water, so that's a good scenario in which you would use it. But also uh, in an industrial type setting where, where you've got heavy traffic area and you need the uh, ultimate, ultimate durability and stain resistance is typically why you would choose to use a urethane concrete. So we're gonna get ready and demonstrate on the seal coat. So we'll show you how that mixes up. We're going to uh, mix our SC, which is the seal coat. Um, you could, if you say perhaps you had a pre-existing urethane concrete and you just wanted to enhance that, you could pigment this right into the SC, but we're not going to for this video uh, we're going to demonstrate this on the trial grade and also the self-leveling grade. So for now, we're going to go ahead and start with part one. And uh, we're going to go ahead and put that in the bucket. And then right after Douglas is going to uh, dump part two, I'm going to mix that for one minute. And after one minute of mixing time, uh, he's going to dump in the part C powder. And we're going to mix that for one additional minute. So that's two solid minutes of mixing. Uh, and then once we have mixed it thoroughly, we're going to apply it. Now, this is a small batch, so we're only using a small squirrel mixer, as you can see here. Um, so obviously on a full, full larger batch, you would want to use a, a, a larger drill and a larger dr paddle as well. All right, we just mixed uh, part one and two uh, for one minute, and now Douglas is gonna go ahead and uh, put part three in the uh, powder, as you can see. So we're gonna go ahead and, and uh, put in the part three, mix that for one additional minute. Okay, we've mixed for the additional minute. Now what we're gonna do is um, take the drill paddle off. You can see right here, we've got the uh, VOC compliant tool cleaner. Um, it's a good product. It's uh, VOC compliant where some of the other solvents are in fact not VOC. So we wanna just go ahead right now, just put, get that uh, cleaned off, and so we're good to go. So that'll set. Now it's time to put it down. Now for this, 
For this video, we're actually working in a very confined small area. Normally you would use a notched squeegee uh, like we've demonstra demonstrated in previous videos. Um, and this product you would want to put down at 15 to 20 mils thick. Remember how we showed you that on a previous video. It comes already labeled at the proper mill thickness relative to this material. But because we're working in such a small area, we're going to just use a notched trowel and it's going to achieve the same, same uh, effect. All right. Once we've uh, not squeegee this all down, then we're going to uh, back roll the material. I think you've got enough in here. I think that's good. Hey Douglas, if you would take a chip brush and uh, brush the corners for us, please. Thank you. All right, we've just uh, notched squeegee down our SC as a starting point for, for our urethane concrete. Uh, as you've seen in previous videos, we always want to delint the roller. Uh, I can really see the lint accumulating on this roller right here. Another little trick that I've seen a lot of installers do to uh, help also pre-wet their roller cover and get any unwanted lint off the roller is you can pour a little, little bit of material on a clean surface like cardboard or plastic um, that's perfect, thank you. And just pre-wet it. And if you have any lint, which I can see lint coming off on the, on the cardboard, it's not going to end up on your surface here. So that's another good little trick. Okay, I'm going to go around to the other side, do the same thing. Now, another thing that I want to talk about is I always use the roller cover and I use the frame working away from where I started. So in other words, I'm not going to roll this way and come into it because I'm more inclined to see the line here. So and a, lot of, a lot of applicators don't realize that. So what I mean is I'm going to go out roll it and I'm going to overlap 
coming this way and I'm ever so slightly applying more pressure over here, feather edging this. And it's just good technique for most epoxies as opposed to doing it this way. You don't want to do it that way. You're more likely to see that line. So always work with the roller frame going away to, to your uh, opposite side that way. Yesterday we applied the UMCSC, which is the seal coat, and that's where we're at right here on our panel. Um, roughly 15 hours has transpired. Um, if you exceed a 24 hour window uh, for the time you put the, the seal coat down, it is a good idea to screen it with a 100 grit sanding screen, and then make sure you um, solvent wipe that to get any residual dust off of the surface prior to installing. So we're getting ready to put down the UMCSL, which stands for self-leveling. Um, and like previous videos have demonstrated, like we, it's a part one, part two, and a part three. We're also going to be um, putting in a pigment pack. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dump part one into a bucket and then part two into the bucket. We're gonna mix that for approximately 30 to 40 seconds. And then we're going to introduce the pigment pack. We're gonna mix that for an additional 30 to 40 seconds. Once that's thoroughly mixed and we don't see any streaking, we're then going to um, put in or mix in the part three, which is the cement uh, self-leveling. Now there's a multitude of ways that you can apply this product. Um, some people prefer a 16th inch gauge rake, okay, which is acceptable. I've seen a lot of installers use the V-notch squeegee. You would wanna uh, get, get the squeegee that's a 16th of an inch, okay? And in terms of finishing it, some people will use a smoothing paddle, but you have to have skill when using this tool to not create lines in it. But this is a good, a good way of uh, laying it down or smoothing it down. And then other per installers I've seen use a looped roller. So you would uh, V-notch squeegee the material down or gauge rake it down and a second worker would come behind and use this. Um, I've also seen people use a porcupine roller. So it really boils down to your personal preference on uh, installation tools to use. So we're going to get set up and we're going to start mixing. We're going to start mixing our UMC SL. We're going to start by dumping part one into the bucket. So let's go ahead and get, get us part one. We're using a smaller drill uh, before we mix the cement. It just uh, prevents the material um, splattering everywhere. So just a smaller drill for this. And then when we mix the cement, as you saw in the previous video, um, we're going to switch to the larger drill. All right, approximately 30 seconds. We're gonna put the pigment pack in. Additional 30 seconds. Now what we're going to do is uh, switch the drill and um, put the part three in.
All right, the addition of part three. All right, we've got a full three minutes of mixing, and like we uh, discussed previously, this is such a small area, we're just using a little notch trowel. So, you know, on a larger area, you can use the uh, gauge rake or the V-notch squeegee. So we're just gonna move it around, but you can see it's self-leveling consistency. It's a real easy product to work with. All right, you can see we're putting it down. Uh, coverage rate's approximately at an eighth, eighth of an inch thick. It's approximately 40 square feet of coverage that you'll get. All right, so we'll demonstrate both methods here. One way, um, despite the fact that it's self-leveling, you still need to go ahead and, and give it a little bit of additional assistance with the leveling. So as far as the loop roller is concerned, or as some people prefer, as we discussed, a smoothing paddle. Boils down to personal preference. Okay. On our SL self-leveling epoxy, we're back the following day. What we've done is we've uh, screened it with a 120 grit sanding screen. On small areas, you can use a uh, um, palm sander as well. But what's really important is once it's been sanded, you need to solvent wipe it. On large applications, it's usually a two-person operation. One person is spraying uh, acetone down while one person comes behind and gets the residual dust off of the surface uh, to make sure you've, you're left with a clean surface for the installation, in this case, of the Purdue P72 polyaspartic coating. 
we're going to mix and apply the Purdue P72 over the, the self-leveling urethane concrete. All right, the material's been mixed. Douglas is ready to roll it down. He's using a uh, quarter inch nap roller. Obviously on larger installations, it's better to use an 18 inch roller uh, cover. And keep in mind the material, uh, especially if it's warm like it is for while we're shooting this video, to have additional roller covers and roller frames ready to go that have already been previously delinted. If you're doing thousands of square feet, what happens is the material starts to set up on the roller cover from the first or second batch. So it's a great idea to periodically change those roller covers out to prevent the material from setting up. Your typical coverage rate uh, on the P72 is approximately 250 to 300 square feet per coat per gallon. And you're looking at an approximate uh, dry time where you could open it to light traffic in about four to six hours, depending on the humidity and the ambient temperature.